I'm sorry, am I waiting Good on morning. you again? Yes, yes you are. I've just started the recording. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, do not panic, that is a blank screen you're seeing and it's okay. Um, we'll get to um, what that is in a second. Um, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online show where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country now. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time and they are recorded so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings that's fine you can always watch any of our recordings that we have out there. We are in our fourth year of doing this so we have quite a, quite a few question, uh, recordings out there. Um, we do all sorts of different things here on the show, presentations, interviews, web tours, um, anything that we can think of. Um, and we do have commission staff that do presentations for us. And we do have guest speakers as we have this morning. Today with us, and you've already heard him on the line, we have Ben Bizzle who is from um, the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library in Arkansas. Say hello, Ben. Hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. I know you were there. <laughs> Um, and you may not know who Ben is, but you may know about some of the things you've done if you've seen them, um, some of the marketing that he's done for their library there. And that's what we're going to talk about today, have him uh, tell us um, about how all that went through. So um, before we do get started, Ben, I think we do have to um, come clean with a little something here. Um, and you may get into this more as you talk about what you're doing there and what you've been doing at the library. Um, but uh, you're not a librarian, are you? I am not a librarian, no. <laughs> uh, my history is in technology, and uh, mm -hmm. I uh, brought that to the table when I came on about four years ago. And uh, as a result of that and some other folks that are involved in the things that we do that aren't librarians as well, I think we've wound up with a bit of a different approach to uh, to our marketing as well as our technology than some other libraries that uh, Hopefully we'll get into later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you want to start here? You seem to have a plan. Uh, yes. <laughs> you just let me know when you're ready. Um, no, we're good to go. Yeah, we're good. Um, so um, you've been doing some interesting things. Do you want to start with the, actually your background? Actually, you said you are in, in tech, more technology. You're the you're the director of director of technology is your title there. Uh, that is correct. Yeah, I'm the director the library, of technology. Yeah. I'm trying to mm -hmm. find my uh, screen right now. I'll, that's not it again. Hello, everyone. There you are. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Ben Bizzle. I'm the Director of Technology of the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library in Jones Boogie, Arkansas. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, we've, I know we've got some folks on here from our library and mm -hmm. some other folks from Arkansas as well. So um, they, they know me. And uh, yeah, I, I started out, uh, I guess I've got 20, 20 years or so of experience in technology. Uh, 28 years if you consider when I got my first computer. I started out on a, on a, a Commodore 64 when I was 12 years old. Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> at any rate, yes, I was in uh, healthcare uh, technology for about 10 years, and or seven years, I guess, and then I uh, took some time off uh, and, and worked from home and then, um, then went back into technology and, and came to work at the library uh, about, four, about four years ago, four and a half years ago. Okay, great. Um, so, when you came to the library, how were things going there? Uh, they're going. <clears throat> they're actually going really, really well. Um, <laughs> we uh, uh, we started uh, four years ago, uh, kind of revamping the library. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and pull my slideshow up. I, I, sure. I, I, I kind of the, the way we introed here was a little different than what I expected, uh, mm -hmm. thus the blue screen. But I'm going to go ahead and get started, and we'll kind of intersperse the questions and so forth, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is that good? Yes. Uh, first thing I want to point out to everyone is that this is not my platform. I um, apologize <laughs> in advance for whatever it is that you experience today because um, <laughs> webinars are not what I do. Uh, I need an audience. I, I actually feed off the interaction that I get from folks. Uh, I, I do have Joe Box uh, here next to me. He is going to serve as my audience. You know, stick your head in here and wave for a second, Joe. This Hi, Joe. <laughs> Uh, he will serve as my live audience so that hopefully I've got something to kind of feed off of to some extent. Uh, beyond that, I'm mm -hmm. going to apologize in advance uh, and, and hope that somehow or another y'all manage to learn something today. Uh, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about marketing on the edge, which is just some 
catchy little title that we've given the approach that we take to marketing because for some reason folks seem to think that our marketing is a bit uh, adventurous relative to some of the things that other libraries are doing. Uh, <clears throat> our marketing approach, I will guarantee you, is better than this PowerPoint, however, because uh, <laughs> I'm not a PowerPoint kind of guy, and Melanie was busy doing her real job, so uh, you get something that resembles government cheese as a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, nonetheless, hopefully the information will be, uh, be good for you. Um, we can uh, we can talk about some things later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will apologize as well in advance because of the fact that I've got some sinus stuff going on. I'll try my best <laughs> not to have to clear my throat. I will pick up this bottle of water on occasion just to keep from choking. Uh, so uh, we'll do the very best that we can. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what it's like to actually have to uh, market. Uh, for, for an institution, any kind of an institution, but specifically for us libraries. Uh, there's one type of, of marketing you can do for a library that's more conventional, things that, that a lot of folks do, uh, that uh, is, doesn't really put a whole lot of risk involved. You know, save money at your library or, you know, get free ebooks or whatever the case might be uh, that somebody's trying to promote. Generally, it's, it's a sharing of information and uh, oftentimes there's not a lot of creativity that's gone into it. Uh, the creativity is the part where people get uh, themselves into trouble sometimes and uh, where those anxieties uh, occur. It's, uh, it's not as easy as some people may think to actually come up with jokes. Um, you know, if I ask you right now to come up with five jokes about biographies, you know, don't give me more than 12 words, they won't fit on the, the, the poster we're going to make, you're going to find yourself uh, challenged to do that. And uh, as part mm -hmm. of the process, uh, when, when we work together as a creative team, it's myself, uh, along with Joe Box, our uh, systems administrator, uh, Brandy Hodges, our uh, virtual librarian and PR person, she's phenomenal at outreach, uh, Melanie Dunlap, our uh, graphic designer, she does a wonderful job with, uh, with the artwork that, that we have with our marketing, and uh, Valerie Carroll, who is uh, one of our reference librarians. Uh, she's actually not a librarian. Her, her degree is, uh, she's got a master's degree in English and was a teacher and, uh, and came over to work in the library. But uh, uh, at any rate, that makes up our creative team, and uh, collectively, we come up with the things that wind up going on billboards and posters and uh, Facebook covers and so forth of that nature for the library. Um, <clears throat> most of our creative meetings are rather challenging. It's, it's not easy to come up. We have a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but it's also a bloodbath at the same time. Uh, <laughs> if, if we have... Uh, if we have a necessity uh, to come up with a single poster, then what we'll generally do is each person will have to come in with five ideas uh, on whatever the theme is uh, or the subject matter, and we start whittling them away. So we've got 25 ideas often to start with, and that's not the, the beginning because oftentimes we'll spawn one idea off of another. But uh, the most common phrase in our meetings is, that sucks. Um, <laughs> because there are a lot of there are a lot of dead ideas laying around in the office where we meet. Uh, they they uh, you know are maimed and slaughtered on a regular basis, and you know our egos get that way at times too. But that's just the way things work when you're trying to be creative. Uh, you know the the thing about it is that great ideas are the slaughterers of good ideas, and if you can if you can think in that mentality and keep working at it, you know fail often and fail harder until you get the right one. Um, then you put yourself in a position to actually, uh, you know, have a have a marketing campaign, have a have, have have something that's got some substance to it. Don't just settle for for the good idea. Go for the great one, and and we try to do that. Uh, the challenge is that you don't re you don't really know. I mean, you know, when five people sit around in a room together for for two hours, uh, you know, hammering out ideas, <clears throat> you don't often know whether or not the idea that you wind up, wind up settling on. Is, uh, is a good idea or if it's, it's, it's a result of exhaustion and just ready to quit. Uh, we, we do our best not to find ourselves in that situation, but then at the same time, um, you know, we have to put something together. At any rate, we're going to talk about moments of truth, and the moments of truth for me oftentimes when it comes to marketing is, is that first rollout to the public, when, when they get their first look at the work you've done, because you can get your approval from your director to go forward, and you can get the consent of the, of the board to move on something, uh, and, and that's all well and good, and those people you know, you know, need their support, have to have their support, uh, but the real test is when you put something out there for the public, and uh, 
You know, I, I don't know how many folks have ever put themselves in a situation where uh, they've been at risk or felt that sense of, of anxiety. You know, maybe it's kind of like skydiving for the first time or bungee jumping or, or whatever, but you get those butterflies and you hand sweating and those sorts of things <clears throat> because you really don't know what's going to happen. Well, that was the situation uh, back when we decided to go with these billboards uh, that, that we were going with on this marketing cam uh, campaign this year. Uh, we got the call. We, we had gotten our approvals and everything. It was going to be several weeks before the billboards were ready, and we finally got the call that the billboards were ready and uh, that, that one of them had gone up, and uh, Brandy had let me know that, that it was ready. So four of us got in the car together <clears throat> and headed over to take a look at our first billboard. I know that that's breaking presentation protocol to drink water, but it's either that or coughing you people's ears. So, oh, don't, don't be know. silly. Of course, you need to drink something. You're talking here. <clears throat> At any rate, uh, yeah. So we get this phone call. Says the billboard's ready, <clears throat> and uh, which one it is, and, and where it is. And uh, so, so we took off down the highway and uh, had to go back, loop around, and come back to take a look at it. And uh, it, it it was an anxious moment. Um, Billboards are a lot bigger than computer screens, and uh, this was the first billboard that we that we had go up. And I was standing on the side of the road, and I'm looking at spoiler alert: Dumbledore dies on page 596. And I go to asking myself, was this really such a good idea? Because this isn't like billboards that you're accustomed to seeing. Uh, mm -hmm. The two on the bottom are more accustomed to what you're uh, are more in line with what you're accustomed to seeing. And uh, yeah, which makes them this. which makes them very boring, and nobody hardly glances at them, though. That was the idea. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you look, at, if if, you, if you're driving down the road, that light blue billboard's going to catch your eye a lot more than any of the rest of them on uh, on the road in in that area. So that was the goal was to uh, to to create a marketing uh, campaign that uh, got people's attention. Uh, that uh, you know, put billboards up that look different than any other billboards that were out there, and uh, to just get people thinking about the library. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. At any rate, uh, standing on the side of the road looking at spoiler alert, Dumbledore dies on page 596, I'm like, okay, uh, it's out there now. Let's see what happens because we felt like we were being funny, but the public was going to let us know whether or not we were being funny. Uh, as it turns out, uh, we've had a, an unbelievable response to our billboards here locally. Uh, people love them. Uh, people love this one. This one actually has, has taken off and gone viral on the Internet. Uh, it's been seen millions of times. If you do a, a Google search for uh, Harry Potter spoiler billboard, it's like the first four pages or so and so forth. And it made the front page of Reddit and Imgur and Nine Gag and a whole uh, bunch of other uh, websites. And so we were pr we were proud of that. Now, mind you, uh, a, a lot of the comments that were made about this billboard. Uh, we, we pretty much got crucified for it because it's oh no you're spoiling it for the children and so forth and uh, you know that that's a hand wringer approach to things. The fact of the matter is we we you know we're not stupid. We know what we're doing. And we took an a, a, an assessment of of what the impact of the billboards we were putting up uh, would be. And you know in our opinion we were we were talking about something that's become part of pop culture. Uh, virtually everyone knows the the storyline to Harry Potter, similar to the way they know the storyline to to Star Wars and. Uh, you know, so we so we took the heat from the internet and then turned around and 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 kind of grinned about it and thanked the internet for its attention and and moved on. Uh, Something awful. Uh, dot com. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but uh, they a couple of months ago had had taken this billboard and uh, done a similar thing with it. We thought it had gone viral and gone away, but it, it popped back up a couple couple of weeks ago. But Something Awful uh, created a a. Uh, Photoshop thread out of this billboard where they blanked out what we wrote and put other things in, and uh, it was to quite humorous effect. Uh, you know, one of them was motivational: "You're gonna die alone. Nobody ever loved you, not even your mom." Dot org, uh, oh. <laughs> as well as uh, a, a political one. Uh, uh, Obama, spoiler alert, he gets reelected in 2012. Uh, these are not two of the funniest. These are only two of the ones that I would be able to put up during this presentation because the others um, were profane. <laughs> uh, at, at any rate, if not, you're not, not safe. Language, <clears throat> yeah, not safe for work. 
that yeah, that, they, they would they would have not been suitable for a presentation to to yes. an audience for uh, the Nebraska Library Commission. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to make sure that I don't slip up and say a, mm. uh, a cuss word during this presentation. <laughs> so I didn't figure we'll putting one on one of the slides would be appropriate. Though I do encourage uh -huh. everyone to take a look at something awful, uh, and you can mm -hmm. do a search there for the, the Harry Potter billboard. And you'll find it. There's there's some pretty humorous stuff in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, we we were flattered. Uh, we we felt that uh, you know if if people are looking at our stuff and putting it on the internet and you Google search it and it shows up uh, on four pages as, as the top hit and you know can see by millions of people that apparently you did something fairly effective so mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's the that's the way that we look at it and we're, we're proud of the work that we've done uh, we do have other billboards though that's the one everybody likes to talk about because uh, it's the one that gives you any level of controversy at all which is surprising to me and we'll get to that in a second um, other billboards, uh, this one, uh, Cheap Date, You Get Dinner, We've Got the Movie, is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is actually, uh, uh, well, I thought I thought this was a good-looking billboard. I like the, the artwork on it, the guy with the wilted flowers. He kind of looks like the guy that we would want to be talking about or whatever, you know. And, and this one is kind of, you know, letting folks know that we've got movies available to the library in, in a clever way. We're delivering information. What's really neat about this one is the story behind where it's located, though. Uh, this billboard is in the parking lot of the porn shop uh, locally, and uh, I, uh, when we first went and looked at this one, and I told, uh, I got back to the office and I told Phyllis that it was, it was in the uh, where it was located in this parking lot. Uh, she was livid. She had a fit. Uh, Phyllis is our director. I'm sorry. Uh, she had a fit, and and you know I told him I didn't want that billboard. I told him that if that was the one available, then just don't do it. I can't believe this, and I slowed her down and stopped her. And I'm like, Phyllis, this is perfect. It's great because regardless of what people's opinion is of the local sex shop, whether they have a positive or negative opinion of it, uh, when they're driving down that road, their eyes automatically gravitate to it, and uh, our billboard's sitting right there. So anything that's pulling eyes toward where our billboard is is good, as far as I'm concerned. I'm. Not really, uh, you know. Nobody else is drawing the association between that store and our billboard. So, you know, I, to me, that was an opportunity for for people to be mm -hmm. looking that direction and have a chance to see our billboard. So, you know, I kind of like where it wound up located. Uh, a couple of the other billboards mm -hmm. that we've got put up are romance novels cheaper than cats. Um, uh -huh. I think this billboard particularly uh, it does. <laughs> Does a good job of uh, of of, or it's a good example of, of what we were looking for with regard to the simplicity of the billboard. There, I don't know what it is, but there's something of an uh, of an elegance to that billboard, uh, and it's appealing. You want to look at it. You you're you're, you're uh, you feel compelled to read what it says. Uh, the the other billboard on here, the we're stacked billboard, and you know that's my Star Wars nod there. Uh, but uh, the other billboard, <laughs> the we're stacked. Is, is the one that I actually thought we would get some pushback on. This was the billboard I was concerned with. Uh, you know, I felt like people would take the opportunity to, you know, well, that's not funny, and that's not the way you ought to be acting as a library, and don't present yourself that way and so forth. But, uh, no, every, you know, everybody is, has, has really loved that billboard, and it got no attention whatsoever as far as, uh, you know, beyond locally. Uh, it it, it mm -hmm. just didn't get any attention. So we got, you know, we got away with that one. The one everybody got upset with it. If you call it everybody, I mean, millions of people saw it and liked it, uh, and, and the chattering class, a few of them did have comments to the negative, but uh, the one that wound up having controversy to it was the Dumbledore billboard. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, you know, that, this is our billboard campaign. We wanted to talk about it first, kind of get it out of the way, because that's what uh, what uh, everybody um, kind of got to know us for was these billboards that, uh, that had been shared at, at computers and libraries and I posted on the Internet and so forth. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a low production budget here at my home office, and I was just notified that I ran a little bit long talking about the billboards. Um, so <laughs> we need to cut. I, I apologize. I, I do apologize. And Chris, if you'll give us That's a okay. minute, uh, <clears throat> we need to cut to a word from our sponsors. So uh, if you'll hold, okay. I'll be right back, and we're going to go to a word, our, word from our sponsors. Okay.
This segment has been brought to you by the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. Please visit us at www.libraryinjonesboro.org. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ccjpl. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ccjpl. And check out our comedy series on YouTube at youtube.com slash publiclibrary1. Oh, and those videos? Make sure you share them with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. We now return you to Encompass Live. This week's guest, Mr. Ben Fizzle. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, folks. <laughs> now we would uh, like to go ahead and transition over to uh, our, our website. Uh, I want to go back and tell a little bit of a story on how we got to where we are today. Because, uh, yes, the way that's what I want to know about, yes. Uh, the, the way we look at our marketing is, is not the same way that other people look at our marketing. They, you know, the, the, the impression that I get is a lot of people see the marketing that we do and like, how do they get away with this stuff and what on earth are they thinking and, you know, uh, how do you ever convince a board to let you do these sorts of things and so forth. And I've got to tell you that, I, you know, it's not like somebody came up with an idea, walked into the board one day and said, hey, we're going to put these billboards up and we're going to, uh, you know, uh, use a meme on the internet to promote the library and y'all are going to really like it without building up some, some capital with those people uh, over the course of years uh, for them to have faith in, uh, enough in us to let us do that. <clears throat> so I want to I talk to you about, uh, about that story a little bit. Uh, we'll start with the website. And uh, I was looking earlier. There we go. Um, this is our website. Uh, we are in the process right now. We'll go ahead as a matter of full disclosure, uh, let folks know that we are in the process right now of redesigning our website. Uh, four years ago, uh, when or four and a half years ago, when Phyllis Burkett, uh, our director, was interviewing me, uh, of director of technology, uh, she asked me. She said, "Ben, she said, do you have what it takes to take our library to the next level?" And uh, I didn't know. Uh, really what the, the correct answer to that specific, or the honest answer to that question was, um, because I didn't have any idea what level a library was on or that there were different levels for libraries. At the time of, of, of interview, I actually didn't have a library card. Uh, I was interviewing for a technology position and a library was the one offering it. Uh, but what I did know was the correct answer to that interview question. <laughs> And uh, the correct answer to that interview question is, yes, I can take this library to the next level. And, uh, and so that's what we set out to do. Uh, Phyllis was looking to reinvent the library. And uh, we had a website that was, was uh, designed back in the 90s. Uh, it looked like it was designed back in the 90s. Um, I, I, I'm not in any way discrediting the work that was done, uh, but it was done by somebody who was not a web designer who was trying to have a web presence for the library. And they did the best they could with their knowledge of the way the web worked. But it did have spinning stars on the front page, if that gives you any indication as to what we were working with. It, it oh, yes. On the front page. Uh, so yes, we, we definitely. A, yeah, we didn't have a platform to really work from, and, and, you know, and, and we certainly didn't have a digital presence that I was going to hang my hat on. So uh, we started looking at, 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 at the need to, to, to uh, build a new website, but I never looked at it as building a new website for the, for the library. Uh, you know, for us, what we were trying to accomplish was to build a digital presence. You know, we were, we were looking at building something that would be uh, the, the digital equivalent of the library's brick and mortar building and, and to convert as many resources as we could uh, uh, into a digital format and then try to design a, a, a website around that, that that was appealing to look at, that didn't suck, that uh, made it easy for folks to find what they were looking for. So um, that was kind of our goal, and this was the end product. But the thing was that, that in order to get here, what we had to do was to convince the board that the direction we needed to take as a library was a digital direction, that uh, in order for us to remain relevant for, for our uh, patrons, and uh, in order for us to do the things that we were capable of do, doing, we had to start a process of building a, uh, a digital environment. And uh, for, for this one, I like to, to give little names to the, to the, the the things that we do, the, the initiatives. And this one we call tearing down the walls of the library. 
and and you know it also gives the the board something to hold on to something that they can relate to you know what are you doing well we're tearing down the walls of the library it's an easy way to kind of grasp what our what our goal was and uh, the website as you can see we have a slideshow on it uh, a lot of library websites have a slideshow um, <clears throat> we're a little softer a little more cartoony than than I would design it today is one of the reasons we're in the in the process of, of evaluating a makeover but we wanted to make sure that we made it simple enough and easy enough for people to read appealing uh, a lot of visuals on it for visual people, but at the same time uh, accessible. One of the goals that we had in designing our website was that we have a, a three-click rule. Nothing goes on our website that we can't get to within three clicks of the home page. Uh, that way we don't wind up getting lazy and just burying information off somewhere uh, that becomes useless because it's inaccessible. Uh, there are some tricks to doing that. Um, in designing a website, one is the menu bar across the top here. Uh, you, you can do mouse overs to get a lot more menu bar out of your menu or a lot more menu out of your menu bar than you have room on your screen with the drop downs and uh, you know underneath research you can put a number of things you're still single clicking to get to these locations and it, it makes it easy for folks to get to where they want to go um, our library search bar uh, we tried to do something a little nice with we use shadow boxing here and uh, we use triple I as our as our ILS vendor um, and uh, so we incorporated the search bar from Encore, which is their, their I don't know what you call it, it's, it's their fancy overlay product. Uh, we, we put the search bar from Encore on here, and then we shadow box it. So if you uh, do a, uh, a search for Mark Twain, we actually shadow box the uh, catalog itself so that we, we keep people on our home page and still let them do all their searching and so forth in the catalog. So that was kind of neat. We liked the way that we did that. Uh, it, was, it was pushing things at first because there wasn't a whole lot of shadow boxing being done three years ago. Uh, but now with uh, like Facebook doing that with pictures and everything, people have gotten accustomed to be able to click off to the side and get out of their shadow box. Uh, so we kind of liked that design. Uh, we, we had a goal of trying to keep people on our, our site. Uh, when they were trying to do other things, and uh, and this kind of helped do that with our catalog. Um, some of the ideas weren't so great, though. Uh, I think I've got the yeah the, the databases over here. Uh, we wanted to again keep people on our site. We didn't want to uh, open up new tabs or new windows for databases. Uh, so we decided the databases into the pages of the website. But the problem is you wind up with this clunky, ugly thing here on the ones that don't format correctly. <clears throat> so we added this little toggle full screen switch which allows you to toggle it full screen uh, with still remaining on our site and then the information for your, your, your database underneath. Uh, this is one of those designs that we wouldn't do again. It's, it's just easier to have folks go to a, a, another site popped out as, a, as, as another tab or something like that. Nonetheless, the point of, of, of all this is, is that we were building a virtual environment and we weren't just putting up a website. There was a lot of thought that went into the, the way we created it, the way people accessed information, the different things that you could do. I mean, we have a, a, an information uh, announcements box here, but if you click on hours of operation, it converts over and gives you hours of operation as well, and then you can go back to the announcements. <clears throat> For major sections, we put big blocks down here to try to get people to be able to see where they go. Uh, on our children's page, we tried to jazz it up a little bit and make it kind of kid friendly and, and that sort of a thing. And you know, the little pictures kind of move a little bit when you mouse over them and stuff. Those sorts of things. Um, to give you an idea of, of, you see the Happy Talk Now online. Uh, the sorts of things that our mindset when we're trying to create digital environments. Uh, as an example, uh, we had this Happy Talk program, and Happy Talk was uh, a program for children. Uh, that uh, had been recorded, this lady had read these books uh, and, and sung these songs and so forth uh, and recorded it on the cassette. And uh, we had a, a telephone line that had been donated by the local telephone company for us to use uh, free of charge where people could dial in and listen to these happy talk stories being played off of this recorder. And uh, you know, one person could call in at a time, and it was one story, uh, I think, a week that they were playing, and they'd switch it out every week. And uh, for me, if you told me that, I'd be like, okay, that's not ever going to work. It was hugely popular in our community for years and years and years and years. People loved Happy Talk. Happy Talk was one of the defining features of this library. And uh, so anyway, uh, the, the, our children's librarian had come to me and asked me if we could uh, put Happy Talk on CD and still play it because the tapes would wear out and stuff like that. And I told her that maybe we ought to look at putting Happy Talk online. And uh, she asked how we could do it. And I said, well, if you'll convert all of the 
the cassettes to CD, I'll convert it to MP3, and we'll put those up in, a, in an MP3 player on our website, which is what we did. Uh, so now, instead of having to listen to, uh, let's go back to our original screen on Happy Talk. Uh, now, instead of, of having to go and listen to one song or one song or one story per week on a telephone system, uh, you know, daycares and preschools and people at home and so forth of that nature actually have an online happy talk where they can go and we have uh, we've broken into four sections for animal tales, holidays, sing with me, and stories to share. And uh, if you click on any one of these playlists, it actually pulls the full playlist up of all of the songs, for instance, that we've recorded. And I think there's like 120 to 150 happy talks that we've got. And uh, you know, it, it's just it's a way of digitizing and, and, and creating a, a digital environment for something that you used to have to get an entirely different way. And so this is what we were trying to build. This is what we were explaining to the board that we wanted to do, and this is how we wanted to take the library. And they they bought into it. They bought into the idea that that we needed a digital library board that really looks at the library as something that uh, is important to them and is important to remain relevant uh, 21st century. They're, they're willing to take risks in order to do the right thing to, to, to have the library have its importance in the community that it should. Um, anyway, so that was our website and that was the tearing down the walls of our library phase of uh, of this project. Uh, the second phase was uh, what we called Your Library Everywhere You Are, and that, se that segment of, uh, of build was uh, set up around our, our pocket library, our, our mobile presence. Uh, now this is the best I could do to represent a telephone. Uh, I've kind of sized it down and so forth, so if you'll pretend like this is a an Android or an Apple device, then you'll get the idea. But this is our mobile site, uh, scaled down to where it, what it basically looks like on your phone. And uh, we, we built this site based on the idea of what is it that people want to see? Uh, you know, why, why would people pull their phone out and, and want to, to engage with a library? What is it? That, uh, and we started answering those questions. As we answered those questions, we started implementing the those things, okay, yes, this will go, and this will go, and this will go. Uh, and we went to our board and we explained to them that, you know, smartphones and, and tablets and stuff are going to be a really big deal. And, you know, this is, a, you know, this was two years ago, two and a half years ago, and we put ourselves in a position when we came to our board, we were like, look, smartphones have not taken off in a huge way, but they're the future. And this is one of the rare opportunities for libraries to actually be part of something rather than playing catch up on it. And I'm sure that all of you can probably relate to the catch up game once things are established. You finally kind of come around toward the end and, and, and try to implement it because uh, folks finally were convinced that make decisions that it was, you know, that internet thing's going to stick around. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, our mobile site, uh, branch information, uh, I'll take one of the branches and kind of show you how we integrated the features of a mobile phone. Uh, our Caraway branch, for instance. Your picture, hours, <clears throat> uh, librarian's information. Now, on a, on a mobile phone, if you tap on her email, you'll actually pull up your email uh, client for your phone and be able to send an email directly to the librarian. If you tap on the phone number, it'll be able to call the librarian. And if you tap on uh, the address, you can get directions to the library, get a map and then directions and navigation to the library. So we incorporated functions of the phone <clears throat> to try to make the experience in a mobile environment what was capable on, on a phone. If we can get back to our home page here. Uh, we incorporated our uh, OverDrive and our Freegal into the into the mobile environment once Frigal came out with their app and what we did with that is we actually pointed people uh, well, you can't see it on okay uh, you have the option of installing uh, Frigal for iTunes or for, for uh, Apple or for Android and we pointed to the appropriate uh, app store for downloading the music uh, depending on what device that you've got and or for downloading the app depending on what device, advice, <coughs> device that you've got. Uh, EBSCO's journal articles, they have a mobile site and we incorporated that. Uh, story time schedule, events, our events uh, comes off of our events page on our website and it actually feeds directly into our mobile site. Uh, a Facebook uh, connection as well as staff picks, text a question right there from your phone. So if you go to our website, you, uh, our mobile website, you can actually text uh, librarian questions. And then our videos on YouTube that we've done, which we'll get to shortly. 
Now, in the process of, <clears throat> of designing the mobile stuff and talking to the, to the board about how we wanted to go mobile, now that we've had a successful uh, physical presence where people had laptops and Wi-Fi connections or were at home and that sort of a thing, it was time for them to take their library with them. We wanted to be able to tell uh, the people of Craighead County uh, and Poinsett County that no matter where it is that they are in the world, they have access to their local library. And we thought that was a neat thing, that you, you can always be connected with your people. And we thought it was a marketing thing that, that you know, that's something we can sell to people is the idea that your, your library is with you everywhere you go. And, and that was the campaign for it. Our, the slogan that we used was your library everywhere you are and um, <clears throat> our, our, our mobile library once once we added ebooks we actually added our mobile site before we added ebooks through overdrive uh, and the mobile site was getting hits and so forth but once we added ebooks um, we really had the opportunity to see what mobile could do because uh, our, our mobile traffic tripled and it's continued to steadily grow since then. Uh, and it's a result of people using their mobile devices to hit our website and download directly uh, to their mobile devices uh, through our overdrive service. So uh, I, can't, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a mobile presence for libraries. It's just time. It was time two years ago uh, and it's definitely time now. Uh, I personally prefer mm -hmm. websites to apps but uh, to each their own. Uh, there are advantages to both and this is, you know, that's, that's a, a discussion for another time. Uh, at any rate, uh, I had mentioned mm -hmm. that we did some things other than um, the, uh, or when we, when we did the mobile site, we also added some other uh, features to, to our digital presence. I have to figure out which one of those. That's not it. There we go. Uh, here's our OverDrive collection. Looks similar, I'm sure, to everybody else's OverDrive collection who has OverDrive. If you don't have OverDrive or, or some sort of ebook collection, uh, it's probably a good idea to start doing that if you're a public library. Uh, it's hugely successful and is a great uh, service that you can market to your community. Uh, we also have Fregal Music. Uh, that was one of the things that we. In this period of time, Fregal Music is a free download music service. You actually get to keep the MP3s. Uh, for, for our patrons, we have a, uh, a five song. Per, uh, most uh, libraries, I understand, are, are doing three week per song limits. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but nonetheless, it's free music, and it's, it's worth the price of, of, of the service in um, marketing value alone, in my opinion. When you go to telling people that they can get free music and you explain to them that it is free and they get to keep it, uh, that creates enthusiasm. People like that. People like free uh, stuff and they're not having to steal the music to get it for nothing and that's kind of a good thing. We encourage that. Uh, we also have the uh, text librarian service that we implemented through, go uh, through uh, Google Voice and uh, <clears throat> anytime we do something, this is the actual landing page uh, describing our text to librarian and this shows off some of uh, Melanie's uh, web work as well, some of her, 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 her artwork. This looks very simple but that's intentional. We wanted it this way. Uh, we're delivering a message here and the questions here were chosen uh, intentionally. You know, who sang that song about boats? Is, you know, we wanted to let people know we're going to dig for you. We're going to try to find out whatever it is and any question is, is, is fine with us. Uh, you folks don't try to be funny and text that number with something perverse. That wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> no, I think we just send all those questions in one giant text. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just, just to send all those questions. And, and Valerie's probably working the desk today, and she'll beat me up when I get back to the office. Hopefully you should have those, like, in a standard, here's the answers to the ones we've suggested, just in case someone gets, you know, decides to be funny. Really? <laughs> what we should have done is just added answers there so we could have just foregone those, but uh, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. uh, so during this period of time we had also uh, uh, started developing our social media presence. Uh, so we were building a digital environment and, and we were building what, what we believe to be a successful digital environment. We had a, a nice website that was accessible that people really was, it was, you know, light years ahead of what we had had before. Our numbers were continually increasing. Uh, we had launched our mobile website, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, and taking the it, our numbers were coming up on it, it was gaining popularity. Uh, and all of these things were always in constant contact with our local media as well. We're always letting the, the newspaper and the local television station know what we're doing. Uh, currently we actually have an opportunity, I think it's once a week uh, that, that we do, uh, that we part of the morning show on television and uh, Brandy or somebody from the library will go down and talk about some of the services that we're that, uh, that we offer or one of the programs that's going on or something like that. Um, 
So we've always been media conscious and media savvy with regard to making sure that we got as much free advertising as we could uh, through uh, our print media and, and uh, through the television station, radio stations, and things like that. Uh, public service announcements. It's not marketing. It's not selling. It's public service announcements and public awareness about the public library. Uh, and that's fine. If we can sell it that way and get it for free, then we'll do it. And that's what we do. Uh, but nonetheless, we, we started building our, our, our social media presence at this time. Um, I had an idea that that it'd be uh, neat if we made uh, web videos, and I, I wanted to. I thought it, you know, because we're trying to do this whole social media thing, and I had these aspirations of doing something that went viral, and I thought that, you know, at least in library land, maybe it could get some attention and so forth if we did some funny web videos. And so uh, I was a fan of the Office, and I knew that our quality couldn't be all that great. Uh, because we're amateurs, so I decided that maybe it'd be cool if we did it as a documentary style, sort of like the, the television show The Office, where it seems like people are just kind of walking around with cameras in a, in a you know kind of an organic, natural environment. And uh, so, I, you know, I'm thinking about this, and I, I tell Phyllis, our director, I'm like, hey, Phyllis, I kind of got this idea. I thought maybe we could, we could, uh, could, could make these videos, and, and I think you know, kind of get some traction with it, and it kind of appeals to that 16 to 40 target market we're talking about trying to, to tap into and everything. This is, you know, kind of kind of their their thing, and she she said, yeah, Ben, you know, and this is this is one of the things that we have to be careful around our, our library about is if you have a good idea, you're liable to wind up in a situation where it's time to start working on it because that's how we do it. If it's a good idea, well, let's see what happens, and that's what happened here. Uh, Phyllis told me, you know, yeah, that's a great idea, and genealogy night's coming up in two weeks, and uh, so make us one for that. Let's see what happens. So that was not quite the timeline I was looking for because I'd never directed anybody. I'd never written a script. Uh, I'd never done anything that was prior to make a video and didn't have any equipment. And that was uh, that is very very to create something. Yes, that I'm is sorry. very very that is very very short notice to pull something together like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's what happens sometimes. But at the same time, how often do you get an opportunity to make uh, a, a comedy web video at work? So, mm -hmm. uh, wrote a script, threw the thing together, got some folks uh, to willing to participate, and we shot our first episode, which was Genealogy Night. And uh, looking back at Genealogy Night, it. it I would not do that video today, but it sure is funny that we did it then. Uh, it's the story of how uh, Joe plays the, the culprit character, but it's the story of, of how one of the employees sneaks in and spikes the punch for our genealogy night lock-in that we have on an annual basis. And uh, some of our older patrons wind up getting drunk, and our director makes out with uh, one of the pages. So <laughs> uh, it was funny. People liked it. and I encourage you folks to watch uh, the series of if you hadn't, and share with your friends, kind of like the advertisement earlier pointed out. Um, so it was the, 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 the. I just want to. Did the director actually play herself, or was that someone else? No, that was that's Phyllis. Oh, okay. <laughs> she actually. Yes, okay. that, that's our director, and she is a sport. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I want to step back for a second uh, because this is important to point out. Uh, I believe uh, about our library. Um, we answer uh, as a library to the board. The board has final say on anything that we do, and I think that maybe to some degree that gives us some leverage that, that other libraries uh, find more challenging because they have city uh, groups that they have to get approval from as well uh, who aren't quite as willing to, you know, aren't quite as maybe interested in the library or aren't quite as willing to allow the library to spread out and grow and, and, and just don't have a commitment to the library the way they do maybe some of their other responsibilities. Um, for us, our, our board uh, serves to try to help create the best library that we can create. And Phyllis uh, serves as the director uh, trying to create the very best library that we can create. And, and we have a passionate team of people that are constantly trying to come up with ideas on ways to make the very best library that we can create. So I think that when we have that kind of a commitment from everybody and you have a director who's willing to put, her, uh, or put herself out there the way that Phyllis is uh, and let, let the joke be on her sometimes, uh, then you can make some special things happen, and and she has a commitment to making sure that her library uh, is a 21st century library. She's actually going to be retiring next year, and uh, and then back when she she hired uh, me, uh, our assistant director uh, had had come on about six months earlier, and then uh, Joe had come on about six months earlier. So we had kind of had this this group of people that was fresh blood, new blood, 
and uh, and setting a stage to try to make something happen that hadn't happened in the library before. They've always run a really good library, but it, it, I'd have to say that it was still very much 20th century at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I think Phyllis wanted to to, to build something different to shift us uh, in, into the the new digital age and and made a commitment to do that and was willing to take risks in the process. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. a long answer to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely having the support and commitment and trust of the upper administration of your supervisor and your supervisor's supervisor, if that's how it works, um, helps in any of these kind of situations. We're going to do something new, something different. The library needs to get out there more, and you need to, from everyone being able to trust you and saying, go, do it, be, re be risky, and, and just see what happens. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the way that it is. Uh, you know, I talk to people uh, in, in the library community who <clears throat> talk about the struggles they have with getting things done, and, well, we've got to get a policy written for that, and we don't know, you yeah. know, whether you – know, we, we really don't work that way. Uh, I mean, yeah, we've got policies and procedures and expectations and all those sorts of things, but, uh, you know, we thrive on the idea that if it's going to be good for our patrons, let's figure out a way to do it, and that's our – First and foremost objective is is to reach out to our patrons, to engage our patrons, to provide services to our patrons, uh, and to excel for our patrons. Um, we'll figure out the back end stuff and the policy on it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, once we have a good idea for the patrons, those things will take care of themselves. And I think a lot of times people get lost in the in the process and and don't wind up. Uh, looking at the end goal and considering what that is in their decision making. I, you know, I, we started our Facebook page. Uh, I went to Phyllis and said, Phyllis, we've got a Facebook page now, and this is what we're going to do with it, and that's, this is why we have it, and this is why it's valuable. And her response mm -hmm. was, okay. And um, <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's it, because it was. It was a good idea. We needed a Facebook page. And, you know, and yeah, there's some policies on, on uh, you know, appropriateness on social media and stuff like that, but basically it boils down to don't be stupid. Uh, you know, the people that have had me mm -hmm. access to that site have some responsibility, and that's to post uh, in a way that's, uh, you know, in line with what the expectations are for the library, and, you know, we're not idiots. We know what we're doing. We're, we're not going to be fools and put stupid stuff on Facebook, which brings me as a great <laughs> segue to Facebook. Uh, this is our library's Facebook page, and uh, this is our current uh, cover photo. We have some. I loved that. That I love that new cover photo that I saw you just put up. I was going to comment on it and saying, you know, um, maybe with less mud, but you know, it's out on the lawn in September. You never know. I wasn't sure if that would happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You well, I mean, uh, this was one that uh, we, you know, we we did three posters for our concert series back in uh, in the summer, and mm -hmm. then uh, we did uh, we only did one this time. Uh, for for the for the fall concert, uh, and this gives it gives a, an opportunity to tell you know one of the little funny stories about how things work in our creative meetings as well. We had uh, a lot of the things we come up with, particularly jo Joe's laying in the floor over here. Uh, particularly Joe uh, can't make. You it don't have a chair time. for him. <laughs> Well, he was sitting in the chair and he was moved <laughs> off and laid in the floor in my foyer. I don't know. What oh, he's okay. Doing. He's. Uh, he said, "I have comfy carpet." Okay. Um, anyway, on to Facebook. <laughs> I digress. Yes. Uh, Joe. Um, a, a lot of times, the things that we come up with, we, they couldn't make it to, to billboards, posters, or cover photos, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we have to pull the profanities out and water them down and get it, you know work down to something that would be acceptable. Uh, it's a shame we can't be as funny as we actually could, but no, we get in a lot of trouble for that. Uh, you know, we, one of the things we came up, mm -hmm. I say that because one of the things we came up with for fall concerts was uh, fall concerts on the lawn, uh, we've got the best grass in town. And uh, by your mm -hmm. silence, I can see that, that was probably <laughs> not a good idea, and that's the reason it didn't get No, I think it's hysterical. But you're right, yeah, that necessarily not the kind of thing you want to put out for general public consumption, no. Yeah, I mean, you know, yes. we, we thought it was funny in the, in, in the confines of the closed room when we were being creative, but it's one of those that wound up dying on the floor begging for its life because it thought it was funny, and, uh, and, and it didn't make the cut. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> Actually, I, other, I, mean, I have to just say other people think that's funny, too. Um, Jennifer Korber is on the line. She's from Boston Public. You know her. She said, I just scared my office mates by laughing so loud. <laughs> so it, it entertains some people, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we we try. You know what I mean? I mean, it's 
it, it, it's a good time. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want you to think that we're just playing and don't have any idea what we're doing or anything like that either. We are very calculated in the approach that we take to, to, to this. It, it looks like, you know, uh, maybe it, it, the appearance is that the patients are running the asylum or something like that, but uh, when we sit in these meetings and we discuss these things, the end product that you see may be, oh, wow, that's funny, how do they get away with that? But the fact of the matter is that there's been a lot of discussion on, you know, what it's going to mean, how it's going to impact, and, and those mm -hmm. sorts of things. We're, we're fairly savvy at that, that, at that sort of stuff. And you go through um, lots and lots of ideas before you really come down to the one that becomes public. I mean, you have to. Oh, absolutely. That's yes. what I say. Basically, with any program that we do, with any, with any poster, billboard, uh, new event that we're going to market or anything like that, what we do is is we'll come in with five ideas apiece, and that gives us 25 ideas to start with. And most of those ideas are terrible, including mine. I am probably one of mm -hmm. the least funny of the five of us when it comes to <laughs> coming up with original ideas. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we hammer it out. We work it out. We keep, we, we, we sit in there and we keep working until we come up with something and, and then we wind up with something like Woodstock on a budget and, mm -hmm. and some of the other stuff that, that's been popular. Uh, I want to talk about Facebook right now, though, mm -hmm. uh, just for yes. a couple of minutes because uh, Brandy Hodges does the vast majority of the, of the posting on our Facebook page. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have a decent Facebook following, to work very, very hard to build up your fan base. Uh, uh, my current project, I'm not going to go into any kind of detail about it right now, but involves doing that. Uh, I'll be uh, rolling that out uh, toward the end of the year, maybe the first of next year. And uh, I think there's some real good stuff in there about how to build up a fan base. Uh, and then uh, David Lee King posted yesterday, and I tried to share it in a number of different places. A, a I blog saw that, yes. Posting pictures similar to the things that you see here uh, that <clears throat> he and I uh, had discussed and worked on a little bit together. He's collaborating uh, with me with some other folks on uh, on this current project, and I'd ask him, you know, hey, put this up on your website or on your Facebook page, and, and see what kind of response you get. And uh, these are the sorts of things that we we work on. We try to figure out what gets responses, how do people engage, how we better engage and Brandy is absolutely wonderful at taking information and in finding a compelling way to share it with people. Uh, she, she used to be uh, a newscaster uh, with the local television station so she's got years of experience uh -huh. of taking information and finding compelling ways to share it and, and it fits mm -hmm. perfectly with her role at the library and she does an absolutely masterful job in delivery uh, for the library. An example right here, I was trying to scroll through the pictures and stuff like that, uh, just as a, just an off-the-cuff example. Uh, it says, many places across Joan, Jonesboro now offer Zumba classes, because ours are always free. Join us today at 5.30 to shake and shimmy the pounds away. Now that is great Facebook posting. For you folks that are just used to putting up Zumba class tonight at 5.30, this is how it's done. This is good posting here. This is engaging posting. This is the sort of thing that makes you seem human rather than just an automaton that's spitting out information about when the next event's coming on. When you're mm -hmm. using phrases like shake and shimmy the pounds of weight, you're, you're, you're human. You're, you're engaging. You're, you're, you're being friendly. Uh, when, Neil Armstrong, when Neil Armstrong passed away, we put a quote up. I really wish I would have. I posted this and should have put a picture with it. Uh, but um, we, we, we try to do those sorts of things. You know, Neil Armstrong deserved to have acknowledgement even from uh, uh, a library. And, mm -hmm. and, and we wanted to acknowledge Neil Armstrong for the wonderful person and the contributions to the country that he had made. Uh, it also gives a, a, a compelling post that people are going to interact with as well. So we do have maybe some self-serving motivations in everything that we post because we want to make sure that people realize the library is somewhere that they can get uh, engagement. Uh, in, in any kind of subject matter. Uh, I want to uh, go through some of the billboards and posters for some of the folks that may not have seen uh, those. We're going to switch over. Uh, this was a summer concert poster, Concerts on the Lawn. It's the closest you'll ever get to being a groupie. Uh, this was for our summer movie series. Our summer movie series, we showed four movies for grown-ups this year, for <laughs> adults this nice. year. Uh, not those kind of adult movies. Stop, Krista. Uh, I know. I was talking about the subtitles. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> uh, it counts as a book if you turn on the subtitles. We thought that was catchy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
concerts on the lawn because what else are you doing on a Tuesday night? And uh, you know, self-deprecating humor is also okay. We want to make sure that we never insult the people uh, who are providing services for us, whether it's entertainers or, or whatever the case might be. But uh, we can kind of poke at ourselves a little bit. And isn't that really what we're talking about? I mean, you know, let's not glorify or church it up too much. We, you know, we're having concerts on the lawn. They're good fans and they're fun, but it's library concerts on the lawn and free mm -hmm. ice cream. That's a big deal. People like their free ice cream. I see you're sponsored um, by Andy's Frozen Custard, yes. That is correct. Oh, I, would come looks, just, yeah. I would come just for that. <laughs> How about, see there, we have another fan, just like that. that this, one, uh, yeah. this, a, <laughs> this one I loved, uh, yes, uh, I, so that was one that made me laugh out loud too, yes. <laughs> yeah, concerts on the lawn because the car chairs kept falling off the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm glad you found it funny because that's what I say. Sometimes we put these things out there. It's like, seems funny to us at the time. We'll see how the public reacts. Now, what we do with these posters is uh, put them up all over town. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there are lots and lots of businesses and con convenience stores and stuff like that who, who like having these posters in their window. They ask us when the next thing's coming up so they can swap out posters because they want something fresh. And, and mm -hmm. these things don't cost money. People talk about you know what your ad budget and how much money do you have to spend on all this stuff and all those sorts of things. The fact of the matter is you can be creative doing things like this at a very low cost. And, and activity can certainly the cost a lot of times. So people will let you put posters up. You can print out a poster uh, or a bunch of posters and go around town and put them up. And it's a great way to advertise. The thing is, you've got to have something compelling, and and that's the creative aspect of it. Is you know, think, be big, be bold, and and come up with something creative so you can get people's attention, like mm -hmm. concerts on the lawn because the chairs keep falling off the roof. And taking uh, on taking on this the e the some e cards. Um, View, way of doing it. Look, look there. Look. Um, totally catches people's attention too. As I think you said before, not, maybe not here, but in previous conversations with you, um, it's something that some people recognize. That absolutely, that, it's, it's the words it's and the drawing, far. and that you've used that to you know get people's attention. Of oh, it's one of those e-card things. Oh no, it's not. It's the library. Well, that's they're kind of cool. They're on top of the, the cool things going on and that that are out there. And like you said, it just gets people talking. Absolutely, and, and that's kind of that's that's the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, our entire goal, with everything we do from a marketing perspective, is to um, have people, one person, see something we do and say something about it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're driving down the road and they see a billboard of ours, we want that billboard to stick in their head long enough for them to get to work and, and tell Susie or Bobby, you know, have you seen the billboard at the library? Oh yeah, have you not got a library card? And engage another human being in conversation mm -hmm. about the library. That's that, to me, that's outreach. That's what you're trying to do. That's the goal. And, and if what you're doing is delivering information, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's it, you, you're not going to hook people. $49.99, which one of those motels is $49.99 and which one's $44.95? You don't know yeah. because you didn't pay that much attention to their billboards. And that's kind of my point. You know, but I know that Dumbledore is, I know that Dumbledore is dead. <laughs> You do know that Dumbledore's <laughs> dead, yes. and we mourn his death. It was a tragedy. Yeah. But um, at any rate, that's so, it. We just want one person talking to another, and we had these discussions because the idea of a lot of the stuff that we were doing didn't have anything to do with specific uh, library services, and, and I kept saying, you know, that's not our objective. That's not what we want to do. We, you, you can't sell services. Sell the library and then tell them about the services when they inquire. We'll get them. Mm -hmm if we'll do it this way, and then we can teach them once we've got them. But if you try to teach them on the front end, they're probably not going to pay that much attention to you because it's hard to make databases look sexy. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Regardless mm -hmm. of how much you like databases, <laughs> it's just not a really compelling thing that you can put on a billboard and get a lot of attention with. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we do romance novels cheaper than cats, and people seem to like it better. Mm -hmm. um, here's one we did for our genealogy uh, lock-in. Your roots are showing. Mm -hmm. That was clever. Uh, I'm back again. Uh, our cover photos. We like to have fun on Facebook, as you noticed over here. Mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, with our cover photos, we figure anywhere that we can get people's attention, draw people to the library, get them engaged, we take advantage mm -hmm. of it. Uh, our cover photos, uh, the Woodstock on a budget. Uh, I put this one up. Actually, yep. I'm going to go this way. Uh, this was the very first cover photo we had uh, when they introduced cover photos. It was nice and appropriate and so forth and boring. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, I was also notified that you're not allowed to put your web address in the cover photo for Facebook. There's something in the terms of service about that. Oh. And a librarian obviously pointed that out to me. <laughs> I knew there was things about how you couldn't put like that you're selling stuff or costs of things or that kind of things in it. It was supposed to be something more creative was their reasoning for it. I didn't realize about the URL part. Yeah, I was informed. Mm -hmm. uh, then we transitioned a little bit, and uh, we went with the most interesting <laughs> man in the world. I don't always mm -hmm. read books, but when I do, I get them from the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. Uh, there was a Hey Girl meme, or is a Hey yeah. Girl meme, with uh, Ryan Gosling, and we played off of that for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm spoiling more Harry Potter for folks. <laughs> uh, uh, this one is actually kind of funny, because this one actually got uh, autographed by Samuel L. Jackson. Mm -hmm. I saw that uh, one, yes. Yes, I'm going to show I that, uh, and, and you're just going to have to forgive me because it's worth showing. But uh, a friend of mine happens to be a chef, and he's the chef on this luxury yacht in the Mediterranean, and he was um, chefing for Magic Johnson. Johnson uh, Magic Johnson had uh, had leased this yacht for a month, and two weeks in, Samuel L. Jackson got on board with him, and uh, he and my, uh, and my friend kind of hit it off. And my friend printed out a copy of this cover photo that I'd done and showed it to Samuel L. Jackson one night, and he took it and signed it as only Samuel L. Jackson can. Uh, <laughs> that is just and, awesome. Yes, that needs to be framed and put up somewhere if you haven't already. <laughs> Did you get it yet? It's in, uh, it's in my office, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and I ain't even mad because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's Samuel L. Jackson, so yeah, yes, what are you I'm gonna okay do? with that. Uh, our, our last video uh, the one that you see here displayed, uh, Book Club, is a parody of our of uh, the trailer the, for the movie Fight Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, the author of Fight Club was Chuck Palahniuk. And uh, Chuck Palahniuk, uh, I've got it pulled up over here back in May when we released that video. We, we uh, got published on Chuck Palahniuk's Facebook and Twitter uh, pages. And we were honored nice. with that. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's quite a privilege to, you know, that's an endorsement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it... Uh, it, it, it was thrilling at the time because things started blowing up. I started getting these emails of posts and comments and so forth uh, uh, on my YouTube video, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? And I kind of started looking, like, oh, wow. And then I got to read through these uh, uh, comments here, and it's brilliant and genius and wonderful and great. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, virality is awesome. <laughs> and then Reddit mm -hmm. got a hold of me from my Dumbledore billboard. <laughs> And uh, and morality has teeth as well. But uh, at any rate, we were we were really flattered. We've had we've had a big mm -hmm. year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the course of one year, we've had a very successful marketing campaign that's ongoing. We're currently about to take uh, twenty four or twenty two. I'm sorry, uh, original posters, um, and put them on the ends of each one of the shelves. Uh, in the library, and they're reflective of information based on whatever the books are uh, on those shelves. Uh, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, biographies, natural history, uh, mysteries, westerns, and so forth. The, genre, the different genres of books. We've made uh, e-cards to go on the shelves for every one of the shelves, uh, and you know, westerns. We, we live in a dry county, and uh, on our westerns, the the uh, the catchphrase or the, the, the joke is uh, the only place to get a drink in a dry county. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for biography, biographies, I'd made that comment earlier about come up with five jokes about biographies. Uh, well, we did. And the one we wound up settling on is living vicariously through the failures of others. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so... Mm -hmm. we, uh, we do and, actually uh, have a know. question. Uh, we do actually have a question about the posters that you're doing there. Now that you've um, ta started talking about them more, uh, Jennifer from Boston Public wants to know: um, if you're talking about being able to do this on your own and, and locally. Um, do you print those in house, and are they in color or black and white? How do you do those? You said you know this is something that some places can you can do without having a huge um, budget for marketing. So talking about the posters you, themselves. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, the the posters uh, primarily the, we we do hang them up inside. You know, we'll put, uh, but basically, there's kind of we hang them up as, as works of art more so than than publicity for the events inside. Mm -hmm. um, but man, we do plan on putting an entire wall of them up when we get finished with the campaign, kind of to preserve it as the this year's campaign because of of the the excitement that's gotten generated uh, 
over. Primarily, the posters are printed to take out into the community and post up in the various uh, places mm -hmm. uh, to, to promote serv or services or events that are going into the library. Uh, the but ones do you we'll print them? On, but do you print them in the library uh, itself, we or do you? Yes, we've yes. got a color. We've got a color copier that we print, uh, or ah. and a color printer that we print them off of. We don't send mm -hmm. them off to print. We print all the okay. posters. And stuff. We do send some stuff off to print, but the posters themselves, no, we don't. Uh, we, we print those in house. Mm -hmm. Boy, I shouldn't have offered mm -hmm. to answer questions because I don't know where I was going now, and I'm kind of sitting here like, <laughs> What's, what do we do next? Sorry. Uh, but, uh, at any rate, uh, I need to step back a little bit because I kind of got into talking about the, the marketing campaign. I just kind of transitioned into that. Uh, the point I want people to realize is that our board has watched us grow in a very significant way over four years or four and a half years. And, and they're very pleased with what we've done. So we've kind of earned a confidence level in our board that when we go to mm -hmm. them and talk to them about what it is that we want to do, we've got an entire series of successes to build on in asking for that trust. So when we ask them if they'd be willing to let us uh, use some e-cards because it's uh, you know an internet meme, and I, and I like to well let me finish this first. Uh, an internet meme, we're, we're going to kind of copycat that or whatever, and uh, and we explain the appeal and why people will like it and, and those sorts of things. Then um, they wind up thinking, okay, well we don't really know about that and we're not familiar with it, but uh, you know this seems kind of funny and. We understand that you know you've been right before. Go for it. You know, let's see what happens or whatever. They don't really put a whole lot of of concern into it the way that you might think that. Oh Lord, they're going to do. You know, and we don't go every time we create a poster or something and get approval. The billboards we got approval for because those are really big things, and 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 we wanted to you know, and it was the kickoff to the to the campaign. So we wanted to make sure that that, that the board was on on board with us because you don't put billboards up like that without. Sure, folks are okay with it. They're big, and, and, and those also in front of and hide. And those also, I assume, would have cost more money as well. To, to like more. Oh, certainly. Budget I mean, yes, would have to go into those to pay for whatever it costs to get a billboard done for yourself. Right. I mean, when when we do uh, when we do cover photos, that just takes you know a few minutes of man hours or you know a little bit of man hours. The posters are similar way. It's just not very expensive to print posters up or whatever. And we know where our boundaries are. I mean, you know, it's not like we're going to put profanity on a poster or something like that. We're not going to be vulgar or anything. We, you know, we, we know how to, to kind of, you know, Brandy is, is we call Brandy our, our moral authority. She's kind of our moral meter. She tells us where the line is and to back up and stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we've got some checks and balances to make sure that we, you know, it's kind of like the same thing as, as our Facebook. Don't be stupid. That's, that's uh, may, that maybe that's our tagline. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Uh, I want to go for a couple more. Uh, uh, go with a couple more cover photos, real quick. Um, mm -hmm. um, before you continue, I just want to interrupt for a second here. Try and keep your thoughts so you don't lose it again. <laughs> um, we are we are just brief. Uh, we've just gone to about an hour, a little over now. Um, so we are going to obviously go over time. We have some questions to ask from the audience still. Um, I just want to let people know we will stay on as long as it takes. The, the system's not going to shut us off or anything. Um, but if you do have to leave or something because we are officially supposed to have ended at the top of the hour, um, everything will be recorded so you can always watch these um, things later. But I just want to let everyone know that we'll probably run over. We already have run over a little bit by our time. Yeah, I like to hear Go myself ahead. talk. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> we'll try and wrap it up quickly, though, so we can get all these questions in, too. Yeah, well, you know, the, the thing is, I, I get to talking, and I want to explain things to people about what it is that we do and how we do it, and I don't know really whether or not I'm doing more showing them what we've done or, you know, rather than telling them how we got around to it and stuff like that. But you know, the, the fact of the matter is is that we have a board that's really excited about having an excellent library, and if, if they feel like the stuff that we're trying to accomplish is going to be a compelling way to reach out to the community and tell them about the awesome library we built, then, then we ought to do that, and, and they had faith in this particular marketing campaign that it had accomplished that, or that at least they had faith in us that we would, you know, uh, we had a good idea that we were going to try to use to accomplish that. And thus far this year, we've had a pretty good run. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, so far we've had a, a billboard go viral uh, on the internet. We've had uh, a video posted by the author of the book that the uh, 
the, the video was parroting the movie of, and we've had a, a, a Facebook cover autographed by Samuel L. Jackson. And to be a little podunk, you know, I say podunk, we're, we're fairly decent size, but I mean, to, to be small town Arkansas, that's, that's you know, in a public library, that, that's pretty good. We're doing something right, I'd like to believe, and, and uh, to get that kind of, of, of attention. And then if you look at our local numbers, and I think maybe this is, a, is, is important, uh, more than anything else, if you look at our local numbers, in the, in the past four years, we've doubled foot traffic in the library. Uh, we nice. averaged a thousand people. Uh, we averaged a thousand people a day in the library four years ago. We now average two thousand people a day uh, in the library, and uh, that's a fairly significant number. I mean, we're getting a lot mm -hmm. of utilization with two thousand people a day. Um, our summer concert series, we averaged 200, we had four concerts last year and averaged 200 people per concert. Uh, our con fall concert series this year, we had four concerts, we averaged 400 people per concert. So we doubled our concert series attendance, uh, by and large, uh, uh, as a result of, of the marketing that we did to promote it. Um, our Zumba class, we have it on Mondays and Tuesdays, and uh, it starts at 5.30. We are filled to maximum capacity every single time that we run it. People don't have room to go in and exercise. If we ran it every day, we'd fill the room up every day that we do it in. And it's about 60, 70 people that pack themselves in there. Uh, we just did a, a play not too long ago. If you go to our, our, our Facebook page and, and look through some of the photos, we did a murder mystery, which was one of those engagement things for the audience participation and so forth. And uh, I played one of the characters. I was uh, Antonio. I was kind of a sleaze bag. And I had to talk <laughs> like this the entire time and hit on women. And, so that's what I did. Uh, at any rate, we, we uh, had 80 people show up for a play that the library put on one night. And, and so the numbers are just remarkable. The, 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 we used to worry about whether or not anybody would show up for the things that we did. And now we weather, worry whether or not we're going to have enough room for the number of people that are going to wind up showing up. And that's a good place to be. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, they kind of – they almost ask me, you know, you represent a library in a way a library shouldn't be represented. That's not the image of a library that you want to have. Well, I don't know. Our people seem to be liking it. Our our community seems to enjoy having a library that uh, seems normal rather than, than stodgy and stiff. And, you know, we're just kind of regular people, and we'll make a joke just like anybody else will. And, uh, you know, we want to be engaging, and we want to, you know, be part of the community instead of something that's kind of separate, separate from the community. We'd much rather... Uh, the community see us as one of them rather than seeing us as a government organization and because mm -hmm. uh, that just kind of sounds boring and yes uh, and that's not what we want to be you know we, we don't want to be a government organization we want to be this just banging library that does cool stuff all the time that you want to go to because you never can tell what's liable to happen next you, you know, they'll be shooting a video and ask you to be in it or something so uh, yeah I mean that's, just, that's you know, what a lot of our image. And that's what a lot of libraries are working towards, I think, is trying to rebrand themselves in many ways. But one of them is to be the center of the community, to be the community um, location where people go for the interaction with other people and that kind of thing. And that's another – and just doing this helps do that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, that's kind of our approach. We, we don't look at the library uh, – as a library, I guess uh, we we look at it as a business, and and we make our decisions based on if, if uh, uh, business decisions. I, you know, it's not like well, we don't make any money. We don't need to look at ourselves as you know in that light. No, we do. We we look at ourselves very much like a business, and we market ourselves like a business. If it would be good for a business, uh, and, and we think that it would grow a business, then why wouldn't it grow a library? That just seems to make sense for us. And, you know, we don't feel like you have to talk about library stuff in order to do that. I mean, right? And you're you're you that you are a business, in, but you just your 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 output isn't the profits and the money. It's the interaction and the community and the people coming in and benefiting from whatever you do. Whether they come into the library, whether they go to the web Facebook page, or they use your mobile app, whatever. That's your what you get from marketing yourself, rather than the you know you. Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, there's a whole plethora of statistics I can throw at you that, that validates the success of our marketing campaign, and they're very similar statistics that, that a business would use. The only difference between us and a business is a business is also going to talk a whole lot about a bottom line, and we're not going to mm -hmm. talk about that, but we're still going to talk about foot traffic and website, you know, uh, in, increases in web traffic and increases actually... in checkouts and increases in, in, in library cards and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we and that look does, at the same sorts of metrics. That does lead into actually one of our questions we have from the audience um, from earlier, actually, um, about wanting to know how you measured the return on investment on the billboards. How are you able to – did you be able to do anything like that? 
like what was their effect? We don't really measure um, return on investment on any individual element because we believe that mm -hmm. our, our process, you know, every individual element fits into a whole. Um, it's part of a whole. So you know you, you can't really say how much you know bang for your buck did you get from the billboards because how do you isolate the billboards from uh, the PR work that you do? Brandy is phenomenal mm -hmm. at sticking a brochure in somebody's hand, smiling and, and and introducing it in a way that compels them to look at that brochure. And how do you mm -hmm. hang a value on that specific thing or uh, the work we do on Facebook or the posters that we put up? What we can do is we can we can look at numbers uh, prior to the things that we're doing now and we can look at numbers uh, as a result of the things that we're doing now as a whole but we can't really break it down and say the the ROI for billboards was this because we're not going to take a survey of people to ask them you know did you see the billboard and was that Mm -hmm. What the brought you here today? The I don't even know how to do in, that yeah. without looking dumb. I mean, you well, know. Well, there are there are there are surveys stuff. that are done that way. I've seen lots of things where I've gone and signed up for something or registered for something. It says, "How did you find out about us?" and it lists all right. the different options. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Yeah, you did as a whole thing. Um, I do want to try and get to some of these questions before it gets too late, though, if that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, I'll, I like that one. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you're going to keep distracting me with these. Um, the graphic design on the ads and posters, you have someone, like that drawing there, you have someone that's on your staff that does those as well. You, you didn't um, outsource it. You have a person in your team. Uh, we, we have... Um we have people on board that work at the library. Uh, what we did with the 22 that we came up at one with what uh, came up with at one time to go on the shelves is uh, we asked. We actually had some folks that work at the library who have friends who are artists that uh, uh, we asked okay. them if they'd like to draw some of them as well because it's just, it was just going to be too time consuming to come up with original artwork with one or two mm -hmm. people doing it. It's 22 drawings. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually yeah. subbed it out. I think we paid people $25 a drawing to do some of the drawings, but the, the vast majority of the stuff we do in-house. Uh, if we're really in a bind and we're going to do something and we need to drop it quick or something like that, we will go to somewhere like iStock Photo or something and buy an image mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and put it up there. But we really don't like to do that because we like for our stuff to be original. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Which leads me to something else. I don't know if anybody asked about it or not, but it was brought mm -hmm. up on a couple of occasions to me as to uh, how some e-cards would feel about this, or did we get permission from some e-cards or something mm -hmm. like that. And the fact of the matter is we don't need permission from some e-cards to use pastel backgrounds and pencil drawings uh, to, to make jokes. Uh, e-cards have been around a long time before some e-cards came along, and uh, if you're doing original work, you're not, you know, if we were pulling their images or we were using some of the phrases that, that, that had been produced there, then yeah, that's probably something we would, would need to shy away from. But, you know, using an idea because it's effective is not something that is invading on their brand or, or anything like that. And that also leads me to something that I'm kind of proud of uh, for, for our library, and that's that uh, on two separate occasions now since we started this campaign, people locally have copied our work. Uh, the the local hmm. college actually had a um, a card that they sent out uh, to their um, freshman students that was a summy card, and and we were kind of proud <laughs> that you know uh, right. imitation is the greatest form of flattery, and that goes all the way up from you know to, to summy cards from us as well. Uh, and then one of the uh, local downtown restaurant bars uh, who uh, hangs our posters in the window uh, created some T-shirts. Uh, that were were e-cards uh -huh. that they're selling that they got mm -hmm. inspired to do as a result of the of the of the posters that we had put up in the mm -hmm. campaign that we're running. Um, there's Fifty mm -hmm. Shades of you know you got to make a Fifty Shades joke if you're a library, but oh, all yes. the hoopla about that. Uh, um, the last and this one here, this one this one was the answer to, uh, our answer to the internet when they kind of <laughs> got mad yes. at us a little bit, uh, and, and uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. we we don't shy away from anything and. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're proud of the work that we do. Go ahead. And, you got some more questions. No, actually, there's just one other one that came in um, about um, smaller libraries. Um, um, you have a large team, large a, a team of you said five people, your creative technology team. Um, how? What, do you have any recommendations for smaller libraries that do not have a team like that? How would they go about starting creative marketing or being more edgy like this? If you are a one-person library or a small library that wants to get themselves out there as well and doesn't have a, sep a special team of five people, IT people, graphic designer, that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Ideas are free. <laughs> That's the first thing I want to say. 
creativity is mm -hmm. free. Uh, it's the responsibility of an individual to say, these are the resources I've got to work with, and my mind doesn't cost any additional money, so let me see what I can come up with. Uh, now, that's kind of a cheap answer, but it, it, it's, it's true, too, and, and that is that you know we're not paying somebody to come up with the ideas that we've got. Sure, we, we have a, a, a kind of a, a delivery mechanism uh, for, the, for the work that goes into it, but anybody can type on, you know, uh, these, these cover photos are 851 pixels by 315 pixels, and you can open up GIMP, which is free, or any other kind of editing software and create a a background and then color it and type something funny in there and then you know find an, an image to stick on it and you have a cover photo and it costs you zero so it, it's yeah there's cost involved to put up billboards but you don't have to put up billboards if you're a small uh, one person library or something like that you don't have the kind of uh, people, the numbers of people to market to that we do either. You could almost go around handing them out, you know, and we do that as well. That's a, another good point is that uh, the uh, the posters we also reduce down to uh, postcard size and we hand those out to people as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's anything to get the word out and, and the, the, the compelling part that people keep talking about doesn't cost anything. So, you know, when you talk about how do you do edgy stuff, uh, the small library afford to do edgy stuff. Well, it's not the fact that it's edgy that that <laughs> you know the cost factor in it. You know that's free. Be funny. Uh, you know, get feedback from folks that you know, or maybe you're not funny. Get so get one of your snarky friends to help you be funny, or maybe funny is not the, the, the approach to take <laughs> mm -hmm. for your library. You know, you have to decide what you want to be to your community, and then figure out how you tell that story to folks, and mm -hmm. and be compelling in the story that you. And tell. no, that's this goes with uh, almost everything a libraries do. Know your community too. What will they Absolutely. what will they respond to? What are they interested in? That's the first step, and a lot of this is just that. Which um, in small small towns and small libraries, which we have a lot of those here in Nebraska, and I know in a lot of the other states that are watching, that's the majority of the libraries is the small town where you know ninety percent of the people in town, and they know you in the library. You know what's going to reach out to them and get their attention. But you do need, you need to, and you also know your town who is not coming into the library who you need to reach out to even more. So figure out what they would respond to. That 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 is true, that. but I would I would argue that you don't want to find yourself in the trap of oh we couldn't get away with that because we know our community because the, I don't buy that either. You, you know you need <laughs> to give people more credit a lot of times, and, and and sometimes maybe your community needs a little push. Won't you dare them? Yeah. You know go into go into somebody's office with an idea and see what happens. That's that's kind of my approach. Is you know if you're sitting back saying we can't do that, you're not going to do that. You're not ever going to do that. And you know if if you don't have passion about your library and how to make it great and figuring those things out and take just put your job mm -hmm. online every once in a while, um, you, you know, you're kind of probably going to stay where you are. It's a, it's a matter mm -hmm. of what you want to be as an institution and how hard you're willing to work for it. I don't think that mm -hmm. money is going to get in the way of you being successful. If, you're, if you make enough money to keep your doors open, you can make enough money to keep your doors open and figure out a way to tell people about it. And, and I just believe that. And, and, you know, I don't work eight hours a day. I work when inspiration hits, and I, and I don't stop until mm -hmm. I get it done. And, uh, you know, if you can get energized and committed and put forth the kind of effort that we put forth at our library to be successful, then you'll be successful too. I don't money is not the issue standing in the way of libraries being successful as successful as they can not in not in this arena mm -hmm. um, you know creativity is free mm -hmm. sounds good okay that Sorry, is... I got on my soapbox and started preaching. no that's <laughs> that's what they were looking for yes yeah, and that's the it for the questions that we have um, anybody have any I think we're gonna probably want to wrap it up now we're way over our time here but that's okay like I said um, does anybody have any last minute urgent questions they want to ask Ben right now? Um, if you do, you can type them in. If not, he is available. I believe you have contact info somewhere that they can reach you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, hang on. Uh, I guess maybe you I don't had, have a commercial for that. Hey, how'd y'all like the okay. commercial? I thought that was, that was cute. Their, yes, that was a surprise to me. I was like, I don't know what he's yeah, doing, well, but you know, we try. You know, I'm going to trust you and let you go for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, these are all our contacts for the library itself. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, Facebook, it's slash uh, Ben Bizzle, I think, is my mm -hmm. Facebook page. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> you don't know who you are? Good. Yeah, I don't know who I am. That's that's terrible. Uh, it's uh, at Ben Bizzle, uh, B E N B I Z Z L E on mm -hmm. Twitter. I don't tweet a whole lot, but you're welcome to 
to, to Twitter at me if you want to. Um, uh, Facebook is, uh, yeah, facebook.com slash Ben Bizzle. Yep. I do encourage all y'all to go over there and check out our YouTube videos. Um, mm -hmm. They are very funny. And, yes, I've watched them. <laughs> my email is uh, ben at librarianjonesboro.org. Uh, I'm we do easy to get in touch. We do have a tip from uh, someone on the line, uh, Jennifer uh, Korber from Boston Public, and says he'll answer Facebook messages right away. So if you do want to get in touch with him the quickest. <laughs> I seem to be connected all the time. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of bad. I have to mm -hmm. make myself go to bed at, you know, one thirty, two o'clock in the morning and so forth. But well, anyway, like said, I love what I do. And, and, uh, and you're maintaining and keeping up with the um, library's Facebook presence, so it's important to be there um, to do that. I do that for our presence as well for the Library Commission. I'm always on um, just keeping an eye on things in the various Facebook pages that we run through the commission as well. So get lots of thank yous uh, for the for the webinar. Yes, as people are logging out. <laughs> okay, great. Bye. Thank no, you folks, very much. Yep. Uh, you, I don't you, know how I did, but anyway, hopefully somebody <laughs> learns. Something. I think it was great. Hey, it was very good. Yes, great, thank you. This is not my format. <laughs> it was. It was. Just, it was perfect. Just very. In, um, <laughs> I don't even – very inspirational, informational, um, got all, everything out there. Um, and that's what we wanted to do is to get people to know what was going on with these signs and things they've seen and around on Facebook and online and share it out there and figure out how this all could happen. Thank you for the great information we have. Yes, another comment. Thank you very much. I was glad to be here. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we will, unless you have anything else urgent that you need to tell us about, Ben, I can wrap it up. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, um, Ben, and thank you everyone for attending today. I am going to pull back control to my screen. And doo -doo -doo. there we go. And just say thank you for attending this week's Encompass Live. And I hope you will join us next week when our show is Letting the Patrons Drive. We just added this a week ago or so to the uh, schedule, so it is new, you might not have heard about it yet, about patron-driven acquisitions. The Creighton University's, um, uh, Sally Gibson from Creighton University will be talking about, they've been working on that, they have some updated statistics on that, and so she's going to be sharing all of that with you next week, so please uh, sign up and join us for that. And also we do have a Facebook page for the show, for Encompass Live, so do please do go there and like us on Facebook and you'll get notices and updates about all of our shows when they're coming um, announcements of them and when our recordings are available we'll let you know that as well on the Facebook page so other than that thank you very much for attending and we will see you next time on Encompass Live thank you bye bye